Have you ever thought about building your own furniture from scratch, but feel like you need some more inspiration to get started? The star of our first feature has tons of inspirational projects to show you. We'll also be introducing you to someone who makes their own custom knives and tools. Stick around to see all this and more on Evolution Power Tools TV. You're right everyone, my name's Joel from Average Joel's Joinery on YouTube and I'm excited to introduce to you a brand new episode of Evolution Power Tools TV. Our monthly show dedicated to bringing you inspirational stories, DIY guides and tips and tricks to make your DIY journey better. We're going to be posting a brand new episode of Evolution Power Tools TV every month so make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn that bell notification on to guarantee you never miss any new content. Okay, let's look at what's coming up on this episode. First up, Russell Platten, a furniture maker and woodworking enthusiast, shows us some of his fantastic projects he's worked on. Russell has also created a video guide to building a solid outdoor wooden bench, so if you fancy finding out how to do this yourself, click the link in the description. After that, we get a workshop tour courtesy of Honor from Dyes in Every Film Customs. Have a look at all the equipment and tools that a custom metal worker uses to create some awesome pieces. Later on, Vicky will be speaking to our special guest, Matt Kerwin, also known as Where's My Pencil, to find out all about his creations, inspirations and approaches to projects. After that, we'll be getting more technical with Evolution Power Tools' very own Lee Price, who will introduce Evolution Power Tools' variable speed mixer. As a senior designer for Evolution Power Tools, Lee really knows his stuff, so make sure you keep watching. We also have the Twister Guide in the description, so make sure you check it out. Finally, it's competition time with our very own Head of Customer Services, Megan. We'll also take a look at some of your recent creations and announce those lucky winners. If you're feeling lucky yourself, then hang around and give our latest competition a try. You've got to be in it to win it. Okay, now you've seen what's coming up in the show, let's get started. Here's Russell Platten and his incredible creations. My name's Russell Platten. I'm a retired offshore oil worker and I also have a YouTube channel called Russell Platten. My YouTube channel is a little bit of a mishmash of everything and a lot of that is to do with woodwork. I first got into woodworking in the mid 80s. I moved from a three bedroom bedsit into a three bedroom semi detached house and I was literally rattling around the rooms without any furniture. I couldn't afford to buy any furniture and a friend said to me, why don't you try making it? Because he was quite a handy lad. He took me to see a guy that made his own furniture and I thought to myself, yep, I'm pretty sure I could do that. I managed to scrape up enough money to buy a table saw, a jigsaw, and I already had a drill and then I started making furniture. It wasn't long before I realised that I also needed to be able to make spindles because just making square edges is a little bit boring when you're making furniture. So on the way to work one day, I used to go and visit a second-hand tool shop and I went there one afternoon and they were selling a lathe for 20 pounds. So I decided to buy that lathe and I went to the library, borrowed a book and then I learned how to wood turn. I bought some tools and then I made my first piece of furniture with the lathe, which ended up being a three-piece suite. This was part of a three-piece suite. This is a single chair. There was another single chair and there was a double chair as well. So I needed to make 12 of these spindles and when you start wood turning, the more of a thing that you make that's the same, it gets easier and easier. So I found myself actually turning these out fairly quickly. I did them in a day, I think, making the legs. Then I got hold of some wood from a local wood yard. And I made the frames with some mortise chisels. So these are mortise and tenon in. I started off with this basic square and then I thought, well, how am I going to put the back in? So it was a bit rough. It's all screwed and glued, but I screwed and glued these sides in and these were actually cut out with a jigsaw. And I kind of wanted to 
give it a feature, so I made this decorative top. And when it was finished, I actually thought, that is not a bad piece of furniture. So as well as woodwork, I also dabble a bit in metalwork. And this obelisk is made out of rebar. My wife asked me if I could make something so we could put a climbing rose inside. And it's basically just rebar that's cut to size, welded together with a finial on the top. I bought that from eBay, I think it was. And I used the Evolution Rage 4 saw to cut that. And it was really, really quick. It makes life a lot easier when you've got something that can cut metal quickly. A few years ago, my wife saw a piece of furniture. It was in a brochure and she said she really liked it. So I had a look at the photograph and I said, oh, well, I can make you one of those. And it's a little wine rack. The one that she saw was made of oak. So I decided to make one out of pine and I don't work to plans. If my wife says she wants something, I'll just look at it and think, yes, I'm going to make it like this. And I'll get an idea in my head, work out the dimensions and then put it together. This was put together using a biscuit jointer that I had just got. It was a really cheap biscuit jointer, but it did the job. And this is one of my favorite pieces of furniture. I really like this. And normally it's got wine in there, but I didn't want to smash the bottles when I was bringing it out. Here are two Easter Island heads, Moai. The big one was actually carved out of oak from the garden. The small one was made with wood from a tree that we cut down in a friend's garden a few years ago. And they're both carved with hand tools, a little bit of sanding. The five-pointed star is a Christmas decoration and this was done entirely on the Rage 255 SMS. So I cut all the angles out, glued it together. Then we've got two goblets. One was made from a tree that we cut down years ago in my friend's garden. And the other one is made from oak from my own garden. And, you know, once you get reasonable at lathe work, making goblets and fine things gets pretty easy. It's not too difficult once you've got a bit of practicing. Thank you for watching this feature on me and my projects. If you would like to see a three part series of me building this bench, click through now. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find Russell's guide to building a solid outdoor bench, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone else featured in this episode. Some really good projects from Russell there. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel and also go and watch his guide to building a solid outdoor bench. You can find the link to it and all the great content in the description whenever you're ready. Later in the show, I'll be revealing who has won last month's competitions and I'll be telling you how you could win an Indulgent Spa Day or a Landman Jewel Burner Gas Barbecue. Keep watching Evolution Power Tools TV for your chance to win. Now, have you ever wondered how handmade custom knives and tools are made? Let's take a look at the workshop of Dyes in Every Film Customs and find out what tools and equipment he uses to create his cool pieces. Hi, I'm Dyes in Every Film Customs. Here's a few of the projects that I've made recently. Antler War Club, something I've wanted to make for a while and I use the majority of hand tools on this one, barring using the belt grinder on the blade. I made this tiny little sword, not really sure what I'm gonna call it yet. It started out as a samurai sword, but then it sort of isn't anymore. I made this from a piece of rusty old chain and it was, it was definitely really fiddly trying to file all the bits and get them all fitted up. A lot more hard work than, than doing a bigger one. And evolving from the actual chain axe before, it's a bike chain axe. There was a lot of problems I encountered when I was doing this. When I first put the chain on, I welded on the top and it was pretty unsightly. So after I decided that I was gonna weld behind so that it still looks like a chain axe. And then it's the head's pinned to the chain as well, just to make it like tight in a lot better and tire thumper 
I think in this one I, I used pretty much every single tool in my workshop. I had to forge the head out, um, I turned this on the lathe, I had to turn this down on the lathe and turn the spike on the lathe. Um, that's another one what I've wanted to do for a while but it was just putting every idea in my head together to make some of what I really liked. So let's go and have a look at some of the tools, what I use in this, in the workshop. So this is my 2x72 grinder, uh, I use this grinder pretty much every single project. Um, the 72 inch belt I find is perfect if you've got a smaller belt, the, the abrasive tends to wear out a lot quicker and with it being a longer belt it's, it's not heating up certain spots at a time, it, 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 it helps cool a lot quicker, especially when grinding steel as well, especially high carbon steel. Um, not only do I grind steel on here, I also grind wood. This is um, aluminium oxide, which I'm using for grinding wood. And then I use the Cubitron 2, which, which is for metal. I have a lot of attachment for this. I have the small wheel attachment for getting into those niggly little areas. And as you can see, there's different sized wheels on here, which are pretty much the same thing. Not only do I use a 2x72, but I also use disc grinders. I have this disc grinder, which I use for flattening off um, blocks knife handle scales, so that's just for wood. And then I have this disc grinder, which is solely for bevels on knives. Um, the difference with this one is it's slightly crowned. So when I'm grinding the blade, as I go over, it's not gonna catch the tip and end up flinging the knife out of my hand. So these are a real good attachment uh, to the workshop. Let's go look at some other things that I use. So two more important tools in the knife maker's workshop, a metal cutting bandsaw. Not only do I use this for cutting the knife blanks out, but I also use it for, for some of the scales because I use stuff like G10 and carbon fiber, which are really hard wearing on a wood saw band blade. So really handy bit of kit to have. And another piece of kit, which is invaluable to a knife maker is a heat treatment oven. Before I had a heat, heat treatment oven, I'd be putting things in the forge and you've got to stand there and monitor it the whole time. Whereas now I can just stick it in there, it's temperature controlled, and while it's, while it's there running up to temperature, I can go off and do some, alarm goes off, straight back, quench it, and there's no, you know, standing around um, and watching things. Um, let's go look at something else. So here we have one of the, probably the most important things in uh, knife maker, bladesmithers life. A gas forge or a coal forge, some people use coal, I prefer gas myself. Uh, I built this myself, it's a two burner forge capable of getting to forge welding temperatures. Um, and obviously coupled up with that, we also have a nice big anvil. This is a, I think a 77 kilo coal swire anvil. Um, this is probably my favourite anvil, I've owned quite a few anvils, I've still got other anvils and this, this, this rings really nice. And another piece of invaluable kit is just some good tongs and a good hammer. Uh, I've had these probably over a year now and these are these are my favourite tongs and favourite hammer and it's just made working a lot easier for me. Um, it means that I can finish things a lot faster because I'm just so much more comfortable in what I'm using. Let's go and have a look at some other tools, some of the more smaller, but tools that I use every single day. Let's go. So those were some of the bigger tools that I have in the workshop, but importantly as well, some of the smaller tools, tools that I use every single day. Uh, a centre scribe for marking the centre on um, knife blades before I grind them, especially if you're freehanding, you wanna know where the centre is and where the meat point is. Also some really cheap but good calipers, which I think I've had these about five years now. Uh, these are good for checking the thickness before you mark the centre and also marking the bevels so that you get the, the, the height right on each side. And then a file guide, this keeps the, the bevels nice and even at the plunge and also when you're filing the um, hidden tangs it keeps everything, all the shoulders nice and even and um, it makes everything a lot more accurate for that. If you, if you want to see me make a bench scraper next then check the link below and give it a click. And thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you click the link in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find a more in-depth video from Dyes in Every Film Customs, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode.
What a brilliant workshop. So many great bits of equipment and tools in there. It was great to see how Honor goes about making his custom knives and tools. Make sure you click the link in the description to see more from Dyes in Every Film Customs. We have a great video on our website of Honor making a custom bench scraper, so I'll click through to check it out. Hi everyone, I'm DK. This is Evolution's family of cordless power tools, which are all powered by Evolution's brand new lithium ion batteries. From miter saw to jigsaw, we've got you covered. Right, it's time to join Vicky as she chats to our guest maker. He loves woodworking and DIY, and even has a workshop in his garage. His YouTube channel is packed with useful guides and builds. Everything from building a workbench to installing a radiator cover is taken care of. And he's forever losing his pencil, hence his channel name. It's Matt Kerwin, aka Where's My Pencil? Thanks for joining us, Matt. I've seen you make quite a lot of things. I first discovered you on your DIY radiator cover when I wanted to make one myself. We've also seen you do a sandbox for kids, a router table, insulate a shed. Where do you get your inspiration from? I think mostly it's, it's things I just want to do around the home. You talked about the sandbox, that was for my kids insulate the shed, that was for my office in the garden because I just had kids, I needed somewhere to work because I was working from home at the time. So I think mostly it comes from things I need to do around the home or things I think might interest people or I think people might you know, get some use from if they see me making a video of it. Well, I also knew you when you were a different name. Yep. Was there any other pressures from your wife because you used to be called Happy Wife, Happy Life? I did, so I... I first started watching videos on YouTube around DIY when I bought a house that needed a complete renovation and I basically had six weeks to get it done. Um, <laughs> she was pregnant with our first child and had to get it done really quick. Watched all these videos on YouTube on how to fit a kitchen, how to put up a stud wall and I didn't have time to film any of it because as you probably know if, if you film yourself doing something it takes three times longer. Definitely. Then once the house was done it wasn't really done. There were still all the little bits to do and, uh, you know, I wanted to keep the wife happy. And so I thought, well, I'll, you know, I've taken a lot from the YouTube community in terms of learning how to do things. I thought, well, I'll, um, I'll, I'll try and give something back. And I think the first video I did was putting up a towel rail in a bathroom, which was, yeah, probably wasn't my best video, but um, it's, it's had a few views. So, yeah. Your router table video, that's had 1.3 million views last time I checked. Why do you think that took off so well? Well, I can t certainly tell you what I didn't. It wasn't because of the music. <laughs> <laughs> I've had loads of stick about the music in it. I think it was the first video I tried to put music in. <laughs> Most of the comments I get are either, oh, it's a great build, or we don't like the music. <laughs> so, Which could enhance the, um, the yeah, engagement. Yeah, I guess uh, a lot of comments on it. So it wasn't, it wasn't the music. Um, I think it, I think it's a simple. It's simple. What I've, it's not like complex. What I made. It's functional, and you know you can put it on. It, it's made out of really simple materials, and and I I, I put the free plans on as well mm -hmm. um, for people to to download and use, which I, I kind of wish I'd <laughs> solved them really because they've they've, mm. they've they've had a lot of downloads. Um, but a few people have made a donation off the back of it, so that's good. That was my next question because I know that uh, you had a daughter in two thousand sixteen. That's it and she was in intensive care yeah, for a week. Yeah, that's right. How, well, I was very impressed how much you've already had donated. Yeah. How's that, that going? Yeah, it's going all right. So I did it because I kind of, I, I know a lot of people uh, set up things like Patreon and things like that. And I thought, you know, I, I could do that, but I, I wanted to kind of use my channel for, for a good cause as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I set up the Just Giving page for the neonatal intensive care unit at our local hospital. I want to get to a £1,000 raised. I think I'm about 800 at the minute. So it's going all right because if I hit a £1,000, my employer will match it. Yes, so that's, yeah. that's what I'm trying to do. If I can hit a 1000 then the company I work for will match it in like for like funding. And I'll, I'll be able to have, give 2000 to the, to the, to the um, units. So that would be lovely. So what's your proudest 
project that you've, you've achieved? I think the, the proudest one is probably one that hasn't been quite as successful, so it's, it's, it's a bit bittersweet, but it's, it's a table I built for my, for my daughter. It was just, we just had one daughter at the time, we've got two now. And that was a, it was a little dining table that I made for her that all had um, inlays carved with a router and all, all resin, and I, I finished it with tongue oil, which is food safe. And you know the kids used to eat off of it every, every day for probably about three years. And people used to say, oh, that, that, where did you get that table from? And I'd say, oh, I made it. And people that kind of didn't know me that well didn't really believe me. <laughs> they were like, you haven't made that, you know, you, you, you don't do that for a job. Um, so yeah, that's probably the, the, the proudest thing I've made because it was, it, 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 you know, it meant something. It was for people I cared about. Um, so yeah, so that's probably that one. I've got a final question for you, now you've changed your name. Where's the best place to store your pencils? Uh, um, <laughs> I haven't got very big ears, so I, I'd say behind my ear, but I did try that and they, they kept falling off. So what I try and do now is I try and have them dotted about the workshop. I've probably got about 20, like all in different places. <laughs> and then, then it's not just one that I'm looking yeah. for, it's 20, so it kind of cuts the time down. I'm sure everyone else shares the same frustration but thank you so much for joining us and answering all of my questions. And don't forget, if you want to see more of Matt, go on to YouTube to search Where's My Pencil or on Instagram, Where's My Pencil channel. So thank you again and thank you, you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, Vicky. It was great to get an insight into Matt's channel. Make sure you check out Where's My Pencil on YouTube. No. Do you ever find yourself needing to mix compounds quickly and easily without the expense or hassle of buying or renting a cement mixer? Sounds like you need an Evolution Power Tools Twister Paddle Mixer. These handy tools will take the effort out of mixing paint, tile adhesive, plaster, artex, and much more. Once again, Evolution's new product design guru, Lee Price, is on hand to tell us more. Thanks, Joe. And to make it clear, this isn't a review of a famous family game with some polka dot, Matt. I'm sorry for any disappointment to fans of this particular brand of Twister, but if you're looking for a guide of different mixes and the best practice techniques for our Evolution Variable Speed Mixer, which is also known as the Twister, you're in the right place. So, with all these safety disclaimers out of the way, please stick around. Now, this twister paddle mixer has a high power motor, a large, easy to clean general purpose paddle, and great ergonomics. It's perfect for mixing up large volumes of plaster, paint, jointed compound, artex, or gypsum. It's easy to use and built to last. This will deliver lump-free, silky smooth mixes for all your finishing jobs. Now more machine, it means less muscle power. You can set this mixer to do hard work, reducing all your hand and body fatigue on the job. We're going to look at everything that comes out of the box with the tool. We'll give an overview of this paddle mixer, everything supplied with it, and then we'll look at some of the most popular mixes that are best suited to this heavy duty, rugged, general purpose paddle, such as the mortar, the cement, the plaster. Now every material mixes differently, which is why the science of mixing matters. So for results that last, it takes the right machine and the right paddle. There's of course many other types of paddles available, they all fit with this machine. We'll take a look at some of those other applications that can be mixed, from tile adhesive to paint, and we'll find out which paddle is best suited to each and why. So you can be sure to get the best result for each material. Also, mixing actions of the paddle will also have an effect on this finished mix. I'll cover a little of the different techniques to achieve that perfect, smooth, creamy mix every time. Whether you're considering tackling a daunting plaster job at home or you fancy mixing up a color for your bedroom wall, click through on the link now to learn more about the Evolution Paddle Mixer and gain insight into some best practices for mixing your mortar, your cement, your compounds and everything else. Of course, you'll have the option to ask questions on the product or if you have any specific materials in mind you want to mix, we can show you how to achieve the best result. I'll be sure to get back to you if you leave a comment. But for now, it's back over to Joe. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find a more in-depth video from Lee, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks Lee. I hope that Lee's preview of the Evolution Twister Paddle Mixer has inspired you to want to see more. If it has, click the link in the description for a more in-depth video. Right, it's competition time now, so it's over to Megan to find out what you can win. Thanks Joe. Hi guys. I'm back again to announce the winner of last episode's competition and tell you how you can win some fantastic prizes. I'm Megan, Head of Customer Service for Evolution Power Tools. Myself and my team work hard to help our customers with their Evolution products and today I have the additional job of letting you know which one of you has won our picture competition 
and will be enjoying their prize of a Fitbit Charge 4 health tracker. I'll also be announcing the winner of last episode's big competition that had a grand prize of an Unifira pizza oven. Make sure you stick around as later on I'll be telling you how you can win an indulgent spa day for taking part in our picture competition. We'll also be giving away a Landman Jewel Burner gas barbecue and all you have to do is answer a very simple question. Before we get on to the competitions, I just want to tell you a bit about some of the conversations I and my team have had with our customers this month. Matteo from Italy got in touch with us via email to report a problem with the blade guard on his Rage 5S. Our customer service agents issued him a brand new unit and he was over the moon with the results, having expected to just get spare parts. Susan has been in touch on live chat to report an issue with her laser on her mitre saw. Our customer service agents were quickly and confidently able to identify that the issue was some loose wood chippings, holding the switch in the off position. Susan was delighted with the quick and knowledgeable response from the customer service team. Chris called to let us know that his saw had stopped working. Our team were able to narrow down the issue to a burnt out field coil and talk Chris through the process of replacing the coil with the spare parts that we sent out to him. He was delighted with the help that he received. If you need any information about Evolution Power Tools products or any support with your purchase, our customer service and technical support team are on hand 8am to 5pm, Monday to Friday. Right, let's get on to the competitions. You guys have been sending in the pictures of the things that you have been making and they all look so good. Let's have a look at some of them. First up, 3D Woodbird has tagged us in this amazing picture of a picnic table for squirrels. What a great idea and a brilliant build. Next, Connolly Music has tagged us in this picture of all their evolution tools outside on a sunny day. If you have a picture like this that's already on Facebook or Instagram, don't forget to tag it with hashtag EvolutionTVWin so that you can enter the competition. This is a great picture of Lane's Woodcraft's chopping board project. All these different types of wood really make this an eye-catching creation. Just look at this beautiful combination shed and greenhouse project that Adrian has sent in. It's great to see what you guys have been working on in your gardens now that the weather is getting better. Finally, Forest Edge Furniture has tagged us in this picture of one of their creations. It's a bath tray for holding various objects while they're having a soak. What a fantastic project. All of your pictures have been great, but only one of you has won the competition and the Fitbit Charge for. And I'm pleased to announce that the winner of our picture competition and the lucky recipient of the Fitbit Charge for is 3D Woodbird for the picnic table for squirrels. Let's have a look at it in action. Very well done. We'll be sending off your prize shortly. Next month for our June 2022 episode, we will be giving away an Indulgent Spa Day as our picture competition prize. The Indulgent Spa Collection offers the lucky recipient a choice of pampering experiences, some are even for two. With an assortment of options across the UK, this gift voucher is sure to bring a smile to anyone's face. If you want to take part in our picture competition, all you have to do is post a picture on Instagram of something that you've made recently. Make sure you use the hashtag, hashtag EvolutionTVWin, or your picture may be missed. You can even just tag us in a picture that you've uploaded already. It doesn't have to be new. Just add the hashtag to your existing picture to enter. In our last episode, we gave away the One Night Stay collection, which was won by Iona Dale Crafts. Congratulations again, and thanks to Anna for sending us this picture of her husband, Chris, holding their prize. As you can see, Chris is a big Evolution Power Tools fan. Remember, if you're watching this after June 2022, the competition will be closed. You can, however, still take part. Click the competition link in the description to see the latest prizes. Right, in our last episode, you took part in our big competition to win an Unifira pizza oven. All you had to do was answer A, B or C to this simple question. Which store did Paul Wilmore visit in his feature in last month's episode? Was it A, B and Q? B, Screwfix, or C, home base. The answer is of course A, B and Q. Very well done to Alan for getting the correct answer. If you want to be our big winner, just like Alan, 
stick around for this month's grand prize competition. You could be in for a chance of winning a Landman Jewel Burner Gas Barbecue with a recommended retail price of one nine 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 nine. All you have to do is answer the following very simple question. Earlier in the episode, we met Russell Platten. The question is, what colour is Russell's t-shirt at the very start of his feature? Is it A, red, B, yellow, or C, blue? Click the competition link in the description to answer the question. We will then choose a winner at random from all of the entries and we'll announce who has won on the next episode. Remember that if you're watching this after June 2022, the competition will no longer be active, but you can still click the link to see the latest question and prize. Before I go, I have even more Evolution products to give away. To win yourself an Evolution Mitosaur, click through to the competitions page to find out what you need to do. Okay, that's it for competitions this month. Make sure you click the link in the description to take part in the competitions and win some great prizes. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Megan. Right, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you never miss an upcoming episode. Please comment below if you have any questions, suggestions or ideas for content and make sure you come back next time for more great inspirational stories. Thanks a lot for staying with me and I hope you've enjoyed the show. That's it from me and I'll catch you on the next one.